you score eight touchdowns in a game on 43 plays, and you, you're sitting there expecting to see some extraordinary feat on film, and there's not. You know, in the sense of it's kind of what we've been talking to our kids about of just sounds like an old cliche. Just do your job. Just do your one eleventh. And and we talked to him about it's not about doing extraordinary things because if you look at the stat sheet, nothing just jumped out at you of you know how did they score eight touchdowns in 43 plays? Nothing just jumped off the, sh the screen at you except for when you look at it, everybody was in sync doing what they're supposed to do. So it's a bunch of ordinary guys doing their jobs the way they're supposed to do them, executing the game plan, and it turns into an extraordinary win. And that's what we've been preaching to them since we got here. All I need you to do is what you're supposed to do. I swear to, you know, uh, Coach Cummings comes in and he used to say it all the time. And that's why we put it on the back of the shirts. Do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, whether you want to do it or not. And if you do that, extraordinary things can happen. But it's when you get outside of that, when you figure, okay, my gap is a B gap, but I think the ball's going to go to A gap. Let me go to A gap. Now you got two people in A gap. B gap's wide open. Same thing on offense. You know, I'm supposed to run my route at eight yards, but let me run it at six because I think I need to get open faster. It throws off everything. And so Saturday was really the culmination of our young men believing in their assignments executing and it turned into a great game on homecoming for our, our um, alumni and fans to see. Alex hadn't been on the field because Alex could not figure out where to get lined up on a consistent basis. So when you you don't know what he's going to do, you're apprehensive to put him in the game. Either speed, the kid is, he, he has all the intangibles. He has the speed, he has the toughness, he has hands, he has all that. But he still has to know what he's doing. And so, you know, we got to get it to a simple form, put him in on certain packages, certain things that he can grasp and comprehend until the confidence level builds up, and then he can get it going. Um, but I think with those three kids in particular, with Alex, Deggs, and Wesley, the confidence level started with special teams for them. You know, Alex running down against Houston Baptist, you know, blowing the kid up. You know, it, it builds on the confidence because more than anybody I know, Coach Cummings can take something really, really small and blow it up and just make him feel awesome. And, and that's what we got him for because he has his hands on the whole team. Um, Akeem Deggs has been, like I said, up to this point, he's been our MVP on special teams because he's got his hand in every aspect of it except for blocking on PAT field goal. Um, and then, you know, um, Deg, I mean, uh, Ellis, he sparked it in Houston Baptist. And so they've all had a role on special teams, which is – helping them understand their value and what it can be on offense. And you put those three guys out there, it's hard to keep up with all three of them at the same time because they all can run. So, um, you know, I'm proud of those three young guys and, and uh, you know, they'll see bigger roles. And, and like I pointed out in our meeting, you got you got Ellis on it, five foot, whatever he is, seven, maybe, 170 pounds, maybe soaking wet. And on Cartagena's long run down the right side, he's throwing the block on a six foot two, 250 pound linebacker. You can't even really see him if you're looking from behind, but Ellis got his head in the guy's stomach and he ain't getting to the ball carrier. And so, um, again, just doing what you're called to do whether you want, because Ellis don't want to go in there and block them big old dudes. Anyway, that's not his makeup. But that's what the job called him to do. You go do it, we score touchdowns. I always look at numbers. You got 10 and 11. Those are their two guys. When you look at the stat sheets, you got one with 64 receptions, the other with 44 receptions. And you might have a guy in there with 20, but after that, there's nobody in double digits. So the bulk of the plays are going to those two guys. And, you know, Cup is, to me, he's one of the best wideouts we've seen, you know, and uh, their offense has always been potent. And so for us, it, it's, it's that next step. You know, we talk to our kids about, you know, taking the steps uh, to being great, taking the steps to being the upper echelon of this conference. Well, now you got the conference champ coming in. And so it's a, it's a great test uh, for us. You know, come Wednesday, no one's going to care what we did on Saturday. And now it's what have you done for me lately. And so, you know, you celebrate all that, and then you get out there tomorrow, and it's time to get ready for Eastern Washington coming in here. 
um, you know, we know. They, they've they been potent ever since. I watched them on TV in 2006 play here, um, and they should have beat them, and, but they didn't. And that was the year they went and won the national championship. And so um, both got them going. I respect Bo to the greatest. He's a, um, he seems a, I mean, they ought to get Bo Award for, you know, um, staffing the quarterbacks in the CFL because there's enough of them up there, you know, from his school. Uh, and so we know we got our work cut out for us defensively, and it's a, a, a different kind of plan. I mean, we got some work with it a little bit. We knew um, last week they had a go-to receiver that we had to know where he was, um, you know, and, and Cup is a different type of dude. Um, Cup is kind of Eastern Washington version of Vincent Jackson for us um, from back in the day. Um, so you got to know where he is, and you got to you, you got to try to make them play left-handed um, by not trying to get him the ball. But the other kid is is pretty potent himself. So we know we got to work we got to work at it, and we got to establish the run game again. Um, you know, this weekend with our offense and and control it, and so uh, and put points on the board because you're gonna have to match them, um, and and we're gonna try to keep them out the end zone. Experience is the greatest teacher. You know, it's just like you said. You know, and we told them that going into Southern Utah. Nobody cares what you've done last week. You got to come in and do it again. But as we learned with Southern Utah, Southern Utah is pretty salty, you know. Um, and so uh, we know that this is um, a piece for us to see exactly where we are. You know, we know we're capable of doing it. And so now it's about putting it together in a string of victories, in a string of wins outside of just two. Um, you know, we've had two conference uh, wins, and now we got to go for three. It really doesn't matter who it is. And, and I think Dr. P said it best. You know, he, he comes in, he helps us with our, you know, his motivation. Um, and he said it's not about who the best team in the conference is or who the best team in the country is. He said it's about who's the best team on that day. And so we just have to be better in East Washington this Saturday, um, and we'll go from there.